Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we are continuing to explore the expanded format, this time looking at a Zapdos Jirachi deck. Now Zapdos Jirachi, obviously very well known in standard for being a fantastic deck, but we're going to see how well it translates over to the expanded format. I believe it has the tools to still be a very powerful deck. Uh, we have a few interesting cards that we can include, um, and this is just... You know, Versa Seeker being probably the biggest one, just reusing more Guzmas is just amazing, as this is basically Guzma.deck. Target Whistle is a hilariously powerful card in this deck, and being able to use a teammate's engine as well is absolutely insane. So there's a lot of things I like about the Zapdos build in Expanded, and I just like that it's still, you know, a really good pace setter, and whenever your opponent puts down a Shaman EX, or even plays a Shaman EX, thanks to Target Whistle, we're rubbing our hands together, knowing that we can get some sick uptrades with our Zapdos. Thanks to just having one Electro Power or one Choice Band in combination with Guzma. It's as simple as that. So any sort of combo-based deck that's relying on Shaman, we can cash in on really, really easily. We have a reasonable amount of answers to Zoroark in the fighting stuff that we have here. Um, we're obviously going to have Mr. Mime to help out against Werelord. Um, I will admit that Silent Lab can be a problem for this deck. Uh, we are playing Double Blower to help out against Garbodors and Silent Labs, but we'll get all, get into all that good stuff in a sec. So um, There's still a lot for me to learn about Expanded, so I'm not certain on all these counts, but I've you know had a decent number of games with this deck now, and I feel like I've covered a good number of bases for what I feel this deck needs to do to um, win games. So First of all, we have the 4 Stellar Wish Jirachi. Still a fantastic ability, even in Expanded. It's going to help us pick up the same things it does in standard, really. More switching cards, escape boards, uh, Guzmas. It can add it, give you the added bonus of getting VS Seekers for more Guzmas. So effectively, you, you have six targets for Guzma if you've used one initially. And then you have like the teammates, the Chorus, the N, all those sorts of good cards in here to spam as well. And in general, it's going to help us pick out key pieces like Electro Powers and other damage buffing cards. Overall, the Jirachi is still a very, very strong card, even in a format that is much faster and is using things like trainers mail engines and a bunch of things like that. We're sticking true to Jirachi because we are still trying to just spam Guzma so much with this deck in general. You get multiple Stellar Wish off and it's just very powerful still. So I really like the engine of Jirachi. I still think it has a place in Expanded. From there, three Zapdos. And this does Thunderous Assault, just one attachment for 80. Still super efficient, still super fast. Even in, like I said, this busted meta of Expanded where there's so many powerful things people can do against you. I think one for 80 is still just very, very powerful. And the fact that we are pretty much the best deck in format at punishing Shaman EX, it just really is awesome <laughs> that we can punish Shaman EXs from people. And uh, that's pretty much the whole concept of this deck. Uh, anything that's combo-based, you can just have pretty good times against them. Just because you can Thunderous Assault a Shaman. Target Whistle, Thunderous Assault of Shaman, and you need to find like a big knockout somewhere along the line. And we have that in the form of, you know, lots of different attackers available. So yeah, Zapdos, amazing card at dealing with exactly Shaman EX. And that's why this deck is good, because everything's playing Shaman EX, basically. Uh, from there, we have a toolbox of all sorts of different one-offs. Uh, we have the Mr. Mime. I've already mentioned its bench barrier to help out against um, Archie Stoice, because they are oftentimes using Werelord GX tag team. And uh, that could otherwise wipe your entire field if they've used things like a Volcanium Prism Stars early attacks or uh, even with the Giratina using Distortion Door on a couple of our Zapdos. That is just going to be us shaking their hand, unfortunately. So we need the Bench Barrow to try and protect us. Obviously, they do sometimes play Silent Lab and they even have uh, great ways of getting that out as well. So that's a bit of a problem. I would admit that the Werelord is still very scary. But at the same time, we are an early pressure deck. We're going to put them on the clock as quickly as possible. And um, we're hoping that the Mr. Mime can give us some help in that regard. Additionally, it's very good against um, the Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX decks. Because if you put this guy down, your opponent can't jump over Sledgehammer turn. And that's just going to be great for you. Uh, regardless, we have other fighting support in here anyway. Speaking of Sledgehammer turn, Baby Boswell's in here for exactly that. Uh, we have that big turn. Where we can do 120 damage for this, um, you know, one attachment on the four prize turn. Great for Zoroark's, great for Pika Roms, and that's all it needs to be, basically. Very, very efficient. Um, we have the added help now. We have teammates, and we also have Volkner, which can find Comp Search, which can find Special Energies. So we have uh, ways of 
searching out our fighting energy on the crucial turn as well. So this Boswell is more accessible in Expanded than it is in Standard because we would have to use things like Lottos or just uh, start like sprinting and hoping to hit our special energies. Here we can guarantee it with like, a lot of our supporter cards, which is really, really awesome. The other fighting card we have in here is Pseudo Wudo. It has Watch and Learn for a fighting colorless. If your opponent's Pokemon used an attack during his or her last turn, use it as this attack. So you get to simply copy stuff. Again, we're just hoping that the type coverage is strong. We can catch Zoroark players unaware. We can catch Picaroms unaware. If they've, you know, been able to dodge Sledgehammer turn or if it just is on a, you know, earlier turn, for example, or even later turn, Pseudo Wudo can come in, watch and learn and take knockouts. This can be done all in one turn, thanks to the likes of Dance of the Ancients, which is awesome. So we can simply attach a Prism Energy, Dance of the Ancients, watch and learn. Typically, he's going to take two prizes thanks to type coverage. Very, very nice card in a meta where fighting weakness is still very, very premium. Also trying to hit for weakness is Tapu Bulu. It has the heavy punch attack. It does 20 times each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And uh, this is actually in here for a Seismitoad GX, or sorry, Seismitoad EX counter, um, because we are very concerned about Seismitoad with this deck. We are very, very item reliant, and we need to have ways of getting around this. And in my eyes, Tapu Bulu is a great answer. I imagine most Toad decks are going to be Zoro Toad, and most Zoro Toads are playing Skyfield and lots of Pokemon that they fill their bench with in general. So having Heavy Punch available, still using that... Prism Energy plus uh, Dance of the Ancients, we can get this going. Even when you're up against other Zoroark variants that are just Skyfield based, like Zoro Garb, for example, Heavy Punch with Choice Band can knock out, you know, Tapu Lele GX as well. So if they fill their board entirely, that's 160 for the Heavy Punch, and you can uh, slap the Choice Band on top and literally give them a very heavy punch. So I think this Bulu is strong when there is a Skyfield around, which there obviously is. So um, yeah, really nice card in general. Uh, what's really awesome as well is against Zoroark, we typically will always leave the Skyfield in play. We have these blowers, but these are really in here for like Garbodors. We don't really need to bounce the Skyfield because we want them to have space for Shamany X's and Lele's that we can capitalize on. Obviously, they play their own field blower, so they'll do that themselves a lot of the time. But um, the Bulu is still just really good for his grass typing at helping deal with um, Seismitoad EX's. So from there, we continue with the one-offs, uh, the Tapu Koko, Dance of the Ancients. I've already talked about for synergizing with Bulu and Pseudo Wudo, which is already fantastic. Also just continuing to power up Zapdos and also letting us use Tapu Koko GX uh, as an additional attacker is just, you know, the whole reason why Dance of the Ancients is so good. Uh, it means we can Aero Trail, get into this Koko GX and do our big Tapu Thunder GX attack if we are up against, again, things like Archie Stois. We can give ourselves a good answer to that. And um, yeah, that's pretty powerful. Also, Sky High Claws can even reach thanks to our damage buffs that we have here and there. So bear that in mind. Tapu Coco GX, still a really, really powerful card. There's Pika Rom around. There's uh, Archie Stoice around. Therefore, Tapu Thunder GX, very powerful. Uh, the final one of we have is Oranguru for Instructing. Um, it was already in a, a decent number of standard Zapdos builds, but it's even more important in Expanded because there's N in Expanded. So having the combination of Instruct then Stellar Wishing on top of that means that we are relatively well safeguarded against N in general. We're pretty weak to an N if it also hit with a Garbatoxin, I have to admit. Um, but the Guru is giving us some safeguard in the early turns and against N late game as well. On to the item cards. Uh, I've gone for Computer Search over any other Ace spec. I've thought about having um, Life Do for a long time, but I just felt that I wanted to brick less. Comp Search is just one of these amazing cards. It makes Volkner an even stronger card because it can get us anything we want. And that's pretty awesome. So I like the Comp Search in general. Um, I think it's just a very powerful card that's got me out of some bad spots. And I'd like having it in the deck just for extra consistency. It's basically taken the space of a second Ultra Ball. And then I was able to make a space for something else when I cut the life due. So I like it in general. Speaking of the one copy of Ultra Ball, as I said, we also have the comp search if we need to, but this is again just a vulnerable target to try and find maybe the Coco GX specifically, or just more Pokemon outside of the Nest Balls that we play. One target whistle is pretty much an ace spec in its own right. It is so powerful at just dealing with exactly Shaman EX. It is a dream come true for this deck. A deck like this that loves just gusting and taking cheap prizes. Just hallelujah, just like how Night March played it with Puzzle back in the day. We can Volkner, we can Jirachi, we can teammates with this card, and we can just pop an extra Shamany X on the board for us to finish off. 
It's absolutely insane. Target Missile is amazing in Zapdos decks. It's just nuts. And uh, it's an amazing one-off for this deck. From there, two copies of Field Blower. I think with teammates in Volkner, we have a decent number of targets to try and find this guy alongside Stellar Wishing. Typically, I want it in here to bounce um, opposing um, float stones on Garbodors. That's the thing that we're most scared of. Obviously, we are very ability reliant with our Jirachi and Monkey. So, Blower is going to be important there. Also, if there's any other stadium that's causing us an issue outside of Prism Star Stadiums, we can try and blow those away as well. We can also Field Blower away opposing Life Do's if we are up against like other non-GX based builds. So, I like having the versatility of these. Obviously, we're not playing any stadiums of our own in here, which has its own you know, slight risk. But I think I'm way more concerned about losing to Garbodor than anything else, like stadium-wise. I'm not too worried about there being things like Thunder Mountain that gets stuck in play or Heat Factory get, that gets stuck in play because I think we're naturally favoured in those matchups regardless. So I would rather just have Field Blower in general. And I think we're already pretty weak to like stalling variants if they're going to play uh, Wondrous Labyrinth. So there's no point in trying to counter those, I don't think. Obviously Shrine is a powerful card and can help us get into range sometimes, but... If we're just trying to cheese Shame and EXs anyway, it doesn't really change our win condition. So I like Field Blower as the best safeguard we can really have to Garbodor in general. From there, two copies of Escape Rope, three copies of Switch. Having these very high counts to try and spam Stellar Wish as often as possible. All that good stuff. Rope helping us move things out of the active so we can target some cheekier things on the back of your opponent's board. Uh, two Rescue Stretcher for reusing our Pokemon. We only play three Zapdos in here. We are kind of toolboxy with our basics. So being able to recover these is going to be important. Uh, three copies of VS Seeker. Obviously, it's an incredible card in every deck, but this deck wanting to spam Guzma as much as possible is awesome. And respamming teammates is also very powerful. So <coughs> VS Seeker being able to be plucked out with uh, Stellar Wish is just awesome in this deck. Um, and then we have the four ofs of Electro Power, just for obvious damage buff, and four of Nest Ball, again, pretty obvious, self-explanatory. We're looking for our dudes in general. Onto the supporters. I'm playing one copy of N to try and do some disruption on the opponent's side. Typically, we're the aggressor, so I don't want to play many more copies of this card. We also have the Colrus that can draw us a bunch of cards if the opponent is playing Skyfield especially. This is some insane shuffle draw to get a large hand size but in general i prefer having the higher counts of the volkner which is just good early game for guaranteeing attachments and switch cards most of the time and uh then two teammates the supporter is so so insane in non-gx decks we've seen how vespi flareon can try and take advantage of this and a few other uh, non-gx decks out there <coughs> uh like night march and stuff this deck can easily capitalize on teammates as well Get some damage buffing cards, get some recovery tools, get some switching cards, all that good stuff. The teammates is very, very strong as an engine to fall back on here. And then three copies of Guzma. I like having very high counts, uh, even though we have VS Seeker. We want to see it early. So I want to have physically high count of Guzma as well as three VS Seeker. If you want to go to four and two Guzma with higher VS Seeker, I don't hate you for it. Uh, but I really like seeing Guzma early physically. From there, uh, two copies of Choice Band, obviously for damage buffing and three escape board to slap on our Jirachis in general. And then we're going to have nine energy total. Prism energy provides colorless, but if it's on a basic Pokemon, it's every type of energy. So that means that we can use um, Watch and Learn, Sledgehammer, Heavy Punch, and even Cybolt if we really want to, uh, as well as Slap. We have all these options available, but in general, it's nine lightning energy cards for our Zapdos and Coco GX that we can use whilst also having the versatility um, for these other basics around here as well. And then just five lightning, um, giving us a good number to discard away with like Ultra Ball and Comp Search for our Dance of the Ancients. Obviously another way that we can fuel this is just by having our Zapdos getting knocked out, uh, especially because Volkner's going to pick out these basic energies for us all the time. And um, <coughs> it should give us plenty of options early just to see energy and be thunderous assaulting from the offset so that's really going to be it for the cards in my list there's so many options in expanded to start thinking about what else you could play i think i'll just talk about a few of them um like sycamore is obviously a card or juniper that we're not playing i've actually thought about playing battle compressor as well just to go thicker on versus seekers and then just putting like one guzma and one teammates in your discard pile early sounds really really strong um if i was going to play compressor i, I would think about having um like yeah, definitely the fourth VS Seeker 
and flipping around some counts here and there. But I think I wouldn't want to play many Battle Compressor. It has some small synergy with Dance of the Ancients, but in general it would just be for supporters. And I'd rather just having higher support accounts in general for our early turns, I think. Uh, but there's not too much else I really want to discuss. There's so many Prism Energy style attackers that you could consider that it's really endless if I start getting into it. But I had a look at the ones that I was sort of concerned about. I was concerned about uh, Toad, so I wanted to have a Grass answer. And I was concerned about uh, Zoroark and Picarom, so I wanted answers for those. And that's pretty self-explanatory at that point. So, yeah. And having Watch and Learn is just good in general because there's some attackers out there that just do huge numbers and being able to steal that is just really powerful. So we have a Jirachi start, so we're always happy. We already have a Skateboard Zapdos attachment. So the only thing we'd be looking for now is really a supporter to fall back on. Maybe a Volkner or something of the sort. And we see a Tapu Lele GX, and we're always happy to see a Lele GX because that's something we can try and deal with early. I'm just going to Stellar Wish and pull out a Nest Ball here, grab ourselves another Jirachi, retreat into it, and get a second Stellar Wish off here. There's a small risk to this because we could not find ourselves a Switch card, but we're getting two Stellar Wishes off if our opponent doesn't take a knockout. Uh, we get another skateboard or another nest ball. I like nest ball. We might be uh, moving towards an instruct next turn. Do I hold this? I think we attach and hold the nest ball. Yeah. So far, only seen Tapu Lele, and let's see what else they're playing. Looks like they're a fighting deck. And they're just going to pass. Oh, we actually pick up another Nest Ball. Let's go ahead and grab. So a Fighting Deck. What are we really concerned about? Not too much. I think we're just going to go ahead and grab Monkey and then another Zapdos. They're not going to be filling up their bench too much. Sledgehammer doesn't sound great. Watch and Learn is terrible on exactly Lucario, so... Our sort of tech attackers aren't going to be too helpful in this matchup. That's not really a problem though, because Zapdos can carry a matchup like this, I think, most of the time. Let's start off with a Stellar Wish here. Getting Comp Search is pretty good. Switch is also nice. We could go... Switch. I don't really want to Comp Search any of these cards away, that's the problem. So I'm going to take Switch here. Switch into this Jirachi, looking for a damage buff, obviously. No damage buff. We could get a Nest Ball just to thin. And then I could play three cards and instruct for two. Okay, looks like we're doing it. I think I just want to get another Jirachi on this board. So we're looking for Supporter, Electro Power, or Choice Band here. None of those. That's a shame. So we'll still smack and make him have a Cerola in hand. He's a deck that very well could be playing a Cerola, so it's something we have to be concerned about. But his early turn wasn't that strong. With Bench attached, no Supporter. Gonna float stone attached to the Riolu. Actually can't one shot us. Yeah, he's just gonna detect. Which seems pretty bad. Speaking of pretty bad, ah, this hand is weak. Weak source. Wait, did he flip heads or tails? Yeah, he got heads. So us attaching to retreat doesn't make sense. I think I just discard the prism and the lightning here with this ultra ball, whiff, and then instruct for two. Let's 
see if we can't hit a Guzma or switch card or rope here. Nope. That's a real feels bad. Uh, I should have attacked. I should have got rid of the whistle and just attached and retreated into a Jirachi because we would have had extra chances. Yeah, that's a mistake. <coughs> Overvaluing the whistle just because it it feels like an A spec to me. It's generally that like that powerful in my eyes. Oh wow. Okay. This is not the Lucario I thought it would be. Ugh, drawing a pretty dead card off this. Only one instruct card. Gross. It's my own fault for holding on to this whistle. <laughs> but I'm not too concerned about this matchup in general. A slight concern is that we've got rid of three electro powers early. Okay. They've decided to take a prize card, which is not too bad for us because we have teammates as additional outs now. We finally draw a comp search. Rope's pretty good. Means we can get another Stellar Wish. There's teammates. I yeah, definitely want to grab VS Seeker. I think it's just VS Seeker Switch, you know. There's not too much else we need. Already holding on to comp search for versatility. Our hand is pretty bananas, to be honest. It's just thunderous assault. Put down a Reggie Rock EX. They really are struggling for stuff to do here. We're going to pick this up. I'm just going to comp search so I can guarantee a Zapdos. We're feeling pretty comfortable here, obviously. There's a sash from him. Vulcan's not a bad pickup, huh? We will root. And start Stella Wishing. We're not one-shotting anyway, so we don't need the blower. Guess we start playing around N.
Fortunately, this Regirock does not have resistance to lightning. Some older EXs did. I guess it wouldn't make sense because he's not a ground type. He's a he's a rock boy. Eh? All right, let's get another game. I don't really know what deck that was. <laughs> but we did have some early sort of shaky starts there. But who knows, if his start would have been better, sometimes that makes our deck better. Gives us better Guzma targets, gives us all sorts of different things, so... Hello, buddy. We're once again going first. We have the busted Jirachi start. We have a comp search. We have a Volkner. Things are looking pretty good. He's playing Buzzgarb Shrine, probably. Which is a tricky matchup for us, especially when we've prized our blooming. Hmm, okay. Bulu's normally a good card for knocking out Garbs. That's a problem. We've got the board. One thing we can do is pick off lots of... Uh, Lots of Trubbish, though. That's going to be the plan. Which isn't bad. Don't think I need to take teammates. You'd need to have Strong Energy, Diancy. I guess that's not that much, but... We'll pass. Not the worst turn one. They go for Karina. I don't think Buzz Garbs normally play Karina. Maybe it's a pure Buzz deck. <clears throat> Maybe it's Quad Regirock that started its one-off buzz wall. <laughs> okay. They go Diancy Muscle. That's also a way of knocking out a Jirachi. They do put down a Buzz GX and a Rock Ruff for us, though. That's sort of appreciated. There's our own buzz. I feel like we want a Stellowish first here. Teammates is pretty good. It means we can just get through the active. I oh, know what am I talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, we can. It's just if I want to sync two Electro Powers into a one prize Pokemon. Alternatives. If we go Rope, I could still Comp Search Volkner and knock out the Diancy if he brings us that. Or we could get some damage on the Buzz Wall. Rope's the worst. I'd love to Rope if we had another Jirachi. Hmm. Like a teammate's rope. Teammates think a rope feels weird though. Yeah, this is a weird decision. I definitely want to re-establish this Jirachi though. I, I want to keep Stellar Wishing a bunch. So 
So now we can pretty freely rope. I feel like we want to blow away the muscle band. He's so likely to play strong energies though, but his hand size is only four. Trying to safeguard from some uh, Guzma plays. Let's just hit him with the assault. Our hand is really flexible. It's difficult to navigate. This is a very flexible deck in Expanded. All sorts of things we've got to keep tabs on. So far we've queued into two decks that aren't playing Shaman. Um, I want to see some Shamans. That's why I'm playing Zapdos. Counter the best card in the format. <clears throat> I just want to toot the whistle. Is that so wrong? They're going to Karina. Maybe they're doing some jet punch shenanigans here. Yeah, looks to be the case. They're going to get a second muscle band. They're going to comp search as well. Away B string and N, just for an energy, I guess. This one up. Oh, they still commit muscle. Oh, he put muscle to the bench. Okay. Go ahead and grab our teammates. That can grab us the prism energy so we can sledgehammer this. And they can grab us the switching card. We already have one though. We, I already have a switch in hand, so maybe I just grab a nest ball to pull out uh, another Jirachi here. Like, I really just want to, uh, like, keep the pressure on with our stellar wishing keep getting gaining hand advantage i could have uh played the nest ball first that's a mistake choice band's not a bad card at all really um So I sledgehammer, then he sledgehammers me back. Then what's our play? Our play is trying to gust, I think. Well, I, I at least want to have the option to. any other cards. Electro Power and Bulu. Bulu's a big card here because we can hit his Lycan Rock for weakness. Doesn't feel like he's going to be filling his bench too much though. Would not appreciate an N here. And they have a 
They have two cards that they can grab back with this VS Seeker. And our hand size is eight. So I feel like they're probably going to win. <laughs> There's a sledgehammer. Prism Energy is pretty awkward. All these cards are pretty awkward, to be honest. Don't really want to Stellar Wish first, because I want to Instruct first. We draw one more card off Instruct, but our Stellar Wish gets three cards weaker. We never want this card. These aren't bad to put back in. Luminate. It was a pretty good end. There's Electro Power board. That's not bad at all. Another Electro Power. Huh. We did it. Fair enough. Orangaroo, you beast. Their board state's looking pretty weak, but they still have beast rings available. And our hand is pretty weak now. I'm gonna head and get a brooklet. If he doesn't take a prize card this turn, I mean, it's not necessarily bad for us, but we're basically in top deck mode. Two basically unplayables because I don't want to play the Prism Energy. We do have all four in deck, but I want to save one for a Bulu. Bulu Gang. Then again, it's only. It's not doing enough at the moment. They are going to Karina though. This is a way to get a B-string. Might just be Buzz GX B-string. Buzz float. Okay. They already had B-string. Makes sense. Do they have strong energy or are they flipping some coins? Oh, they don't even have any energy. They're just going to hit us for 30. Well, drawing lightning energy isn't bad. It means I can retreat in Thunderous Assault and draw a card first. Comp search, huh? That can get me so many things. I think I need to spend another unit energy, oh, sorry, another prism energy here. Just the chorus. It's too big of a hand to say no to. How does Rope look? With an 8 card hand it looks scary for him. We'll play it. It might make life more awkward for him.
pretty brave of him to basically call our bluff here. Because we have we should be like super close to reaching, but we're not able to in this case. Pretty brave call from him. I mean either way we'd be hitting eighty on this or this, so Baby Buzz Army is here. I really don't want him to knock out this prism because this is going to be a poggers way to end the game. I'm going to play Cynthia, thankfully. Wow, attach to the bench and hit us again like that. It's pretty crazy. I guess I'm just playing around N at this point. So we go down to two. In comes another baby buzz. We really want him to <laughs> knock out this active so we can dance with the Ancients. Ah, he's going to make life difficult for us. I think I still want an, an Oranga on this board. We have all the good supports in our discard pile pool for uh, for any VS Seeker that we can pull out here. Oof, Bulu. Oh, I wish I had Brooklyn. Oh no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change our, doesn't change what we need. It's a real shame that we prized our Coco GX. That's for sure. So teammates gets us knockout with the Zapdos. Prism energy there, that's the problem. It's still correct though, I'm pretty sure.
This booty represents a big threat for him. Sunk all four electro powers into two buzzwalls. There's our Coco GX, which is pretty huge. See what he can come up with now. Looks like it has to be a Lycan Rock GX attack, right? Which is certainly scary. That's going to sick them all, a bunch of stuff away. Choice band, yeah. None of this stuff matters too much. There's the strong energy. Stretching some stuff back. We're actually in a bit of a pickle now. Huh, this is a bad spot. There's just no easy knockout for us. He was smart to do that stretcher because we could actually have crumbed him. Hmm, I think we're in a bad spot, boys. I know Volkta doesn't cut it. Actually, wait. I think we need to aero trail into the active this turn. Force him to have energy Guzma. So if we're aero trailing, we're doing this. Well, we could take Guzma and Aero Trail and hope to hit one energy off of two draws. Or we can Volkner to guarantee energy, hit him active, and hope he doesn't have Guzma energy. How many energy in Guzma has he played? One Guzma, three VS Seeker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven energy. I think it's Guzma. Because I am a greedy boy. This way he still needs Guzma energy. Okay, we whiff, we pass. Yikes. We put him on the clock though. It's basically the same clock that we put him on. Attacking the active or just doing it this way.
downside to this is that if he just has a retreat card and a claw slash, then we're in bad shape. Let's see. Oh, actually, that means I should have brought up this, right? I should have brought up this one, because now he can float stone this active. That's my bad. Two float stones gone, though. Hopefully not punished. This chunky Boswell deck. All this chunky stuff. Lysander. We actually don't have enough stuff to win this turn. Wow. Not enough switching cards. We've played all the switching cards possible. So it's a touch pass, and it's uh, that's dropping a well played, I think, if he can get us. Thing is, he didn't attach any energy last turn. What a strange stalemate this has become. <laughs> Plays Lysander and Guzma. Wow. Bet he wishes he plays two Guzma right now. I mean, he didn't have energy anyway. Has a Buzz GX. And an S Ball. Maybe some pro deck thinning strats, pre, like an N or something. There's an Oricorio. And a concede. What a strange game. Really weird game. Yeah, when there's literally zero easy things to pick off. There was like exactly one rock rough where we could have taken an easy cheap prize that entire game. <laughs> that's a that's like resource heavy for Zapdos for sure. So I'm not surprised we were sort of running out of steam at the end there. The Bulu made things interesting, but he was cautious of his own bench because we had to reveal the Bulu rather than uh, keep it for like a one turn burst. Because I'm almost certain he would not expect a Bulu to be in my deck. <laughs> almost certain. Oh no. Is this a Venusaur deck? Venusaur is a nightmare. That's for sure. We've done real good at starting Jirachi every game. Real good. Oh, it's not a Venusaur. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it still is Venusaur. Elm? But Trico has 70 hit points. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Superior. What the? Grab a shame and I dare you. What the? I see lots of low hit point Pokemon that we can scavenge on all game. I'll take the Guzmo just because we really want to uh, have that in our discard pool for VS Seekers. What am I more afraid of? I guess the draw engine, I guess. He has so many Snivy, it's not really worth us taking one out, right? Alright, prize number one.
we have no real backup right now in our hand. Doesn't look likely that he's going to respond KO us for teammates. I don't think there's a world where we uh, grab comp search off our stellar wish just to get an N when his hand size was so low. They're going to Evo Solo Grovile and do the shining gray, uh, Sunshine Grace stuff. So Serpentine Strangle can actually do Paralysis, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I mean, we're a deck that gets around Paralysis anyway the whole time. Serpentine Strangle. Now that takes me back. Oh, they're a Meganium deck. I'm flabbergasted. Ultra Ball's a pretty nice pickup. It means we can instruct to try and hit some stuff. I think I can bench both of these guys pretty contently. Just ultra pull away whistling band. I think he's an all non GX deck. I could get rid of the teammates actually and just draw more cards. Yeah. I probably should. We just want to tempo out on this guy basically. Tempo, you say? What does that even mean? Let's put 10 damage on a Servine. That's what I call Tempo. Alright, he's been able to establish double Grovile. That's a 100 hit point Bayleaf, annoyingly enough. What's going on here then? Okay. Uh. Yeah, okay, cool. Save me some time. Let's try and get another game. <laughs> the expanded ladder's so kooky. I'm just waiting for the Zoroarks and the Picaroms that I was testing against the whole time I was off camera and trying out this deck. And now I'm just like, oh. Surviper, huh? Not Surviper, what's it called? I don't even know what that evolution's called. Uh, no, doesn't even come to my mind. Superior, there you go. Okay. We don't start Zap, but we do have Nest Ball Switch and Volkner and Ultra Ball, so. I can live with this. I can definitely live with this. They start a Lele, which is always good again. Uh, always going to be good for us. Let's kick off with Volkner. We've prized two Electro Power, which is yikes. When we're trying to push through and take knockouts. Also prized one stretcher. I was thinking about ultra balling away this Coco, to be honest. Oh, we haven't prized a stretcher. It's in our hand. <laughs> Am I getting rid of this stretcher, though? One, two, three. Ultra ball. Four. Monkey. We haven't looked at our Pokemon yet. So I don't need the board if I'm going... Okay, we go this way. We go this way. We just get more basics out. Genius. Here's what we do. We go Jirachi, Jirachi, Monkey. And we sort this hand right out. Good and proper. I 
think the only reason I'm fairly comfortable getting rid of one stretcher early is because we have all of our Zapdos in deck. So let's drop the two. Stella Wish. And let's Stella Wish once again. Same selection. Lovely. How much do I believe? In the Oranguru. That's right. Fully. We'll pass. I think this is Trev, so getting uh getting Guzma sounds pretty good. <clears throat> They're going to Juniper. Yep, they are Trev. Trev is obviously a horrible, horrible matchup. But Trev's also a pretty bad deck in Expanded, I think, at the moment. So the way to beat item lock is play all your items before they lock you out. It's quite a genius process, really. I'm just comp searching away Choice Banjirachi just to get another Zapdos to attach to it. I think I am. It means I can instruct as well at the end of this turn for good value. Uh, I mean, we have got rid of two... Uh, we have prized two Electro Powers. Nah, we still do it. We still do it. I'm just thinking about trying to knock out this Lele down the line. We want to have our backup attackers. When you're up against an item lock deck, you want to have them established. Give me that Phantom. Gimme, gimme. We already have backup goose. Just in case he is able to like ascension into another Trev next turn. We pick up one of our electro powers. Oh, they're playing Royal Flash Slow King, huh? Of course. Put all my energies onto Jirachi's. Oh, crumbs. Oof, those are some awkward prizes for him. But he's able to ascension. End us out of Guzmo, which is pretty sad. Into lots of items. Which is very sad. Trev's a horrible matchup. We'll probably be conceding in like two or three turns if he just evolves into the break and attaches for turn. Basically, though that's the criteria for us to scoop. Eco arm rock guard. Okay, that's got rid of two trevs. That's the old top right. We'll see if we can get a, uh, a Guzma off this and maybe play some items or no. Yeah, that'll be it. So we really have a terrible matchup against Trev. But as I said, I think Trev isn't beating Picaram. And I don't think it beats much Zoroark either. Without Wally, it feels like Zoroark always has that turn to do stuff. I don't know. 
people will always argue about Trev and its viability, but I think Picarom should keep it at bay for sure. All right, we're going second. We have Nest Ball Energy Guzma in hand. Jirachi start is always premium. And it looks like we finally found a Picarom. Hooray! We found a standard deck. What are the odds? Uh, this is a deck that does play Let Loose. Uh, but they also play Pseudo Wudo. And I'm worried about putting down this many basics early, but I'll do it just because of Let Loose. Pseudo Wudo is annoying for us, though. Blooming let loose. <clears throat> right, sit back, relax, and watch a 25-minute turn take place. That's what should be happening right now. Elixir number one. <clears throat> Woohoo, they put down a shaman. Happy days. We could be going two prizes up turn one. If we stellar wish into a one of our six outs. We also obviously have teammates for baby Boswell Prism Energy as well. We have all the goods. They're going to keep going on with their turn, obviously. Stella wishing. Oh, sorry. Not Stella wishing. Wonder tagging. They missed an elixir. That's just not right. They're going to Lily. Oh, they're going to Ultra Ball first. Sure. Good Ultra Ball. Good Ultra Ball. This can be their own Dance of the Ancient Boyo. Yep. Lily for a fresh seven. Elixir number three. This time it does not fail him. Another Ultra Ball is going to be for a Let Loose. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, we didn't really have a great supporter there in hand, so, oh, we got a good hand back. Good. Very good. We're in the same position we once were. It's just this time we don't have a teammates to fall back on. But I can live with this. It's not the worst let loose I've ever seen. Uh, he's got himself the flash energy. So it means our baby buzz is a lot weaker against this one, but not this one just yet. Let's see if we get damage buff card. We do. Can we just take the two prizes? I don't see why I wouldn't. The only reason to not do is we could ultra ball... And get an Oranguru and instruct. But whiffing sounds so horrible that we're going to use our card draw via our prizes. That's the way we're going to try and draw cards. It's a great draw range in the prize cards. It really is great. Let's take two. See? Told you. Perfect draw engine. And then old prize cards. He does have to be slightly concerned about Tapu Coco GX on our side as well, because we have our Coco Prism already developed on board.
he has to assume that we play it, right? If not, he's going to be in a world of hurt. Well, he's continuing to attach energy cards. Is he going to commit more energy cards to this board? Yes. Onto a Coco Prism Star. That's a big yikes from me, dog. Oh, we prized Coco GX. Oh my god. Oh no, we didn't. It's in it's in our discard, right? Oh no, we didn't. No, we prized it. This is our first search. No. As if. That's actually so stupid. It's just completely game over if it wasn't for this. Well, let's think rationally about this. Absolutely embarrassing series of events. can get me comp search energy but not all the goods okay I think I am taking now the N is so bad we take the DS seeker This is a very feels bad man moment. Coco GX, Aero Trail, knockout. We go down to one prize and he has a Marshadow on board. But nah. <sighs> Pokemon does like to test me, doesn't it? Test my patience. It was that other game where we discarded the Coco GX early. Megami Guzma. Bring up the mime. And smack it. Not a bad plan. That I wish. And we'll go ahead and still wish again. Pretty sure. Stretcher redevelops the mime for us. Pretty nice.
I think I'm just taking the single prize knockout on the Marshadow here. I'm just so, it's so tempting because we know we have a Coco GX that can just be game for us. Just, just waiting in here. One of these for twenty-five percent. Sometimes lucky. Jeez. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we can find it again, though. Well, we have found it again with Guzma now. Well, that was a good let loose. Looked bad, ended in amazingly. They're going to chorus now. Oof, what an emotional roller coaster this game's been. Felt so free. Then the prizes beagled us. Then the Finally taking the prize, then the let loose, then we got him. They're going to continue to attach energy cards while they whiff. Don't really know what else they're digging for at this point. Who can tell? Let's drop the well played. Let them know we've got it. Error Trail, and the biggest thunderous tapu you've ever seen. 450 damage, closing the game. Pretty nice, pretty nice. I mean, as in standard, you know that Tapu Coco is sick against Picaram. So I'm glad we got to showcase at least one proper game there. I think, I mean, we faced some weird stuff. Faced the Buzzwell deck that we were somehow able to overcome. Oops, I just got rid of a Zap Dose by accident. Um... Then we faced a few non-GX decks, like the Trev, which is an auto-loss. Uh, we tried to have an answer to um, Toad. We don't play the Giratina that we could be playing. Um, but the reason why I don't play the Tina is because I think we're already super dead against Trev because we're so reliant on using physical switch cards all the time to pivot between our Zapdos. It's like we could shut off the Tina, but they can still just tree slam through us. Um, so, yeah, I think very good at dealing with Picaroms, very good at dealing with Zoroark players. There is the concern, obviously, of Garbodor, just Garbodor plus N is still going to be such a big threat. But um, the early pressure of this deck is very powerful, and against other combo decks that have tar that, uh, have Shaman, we can just target this all three of them, and it's really good fun. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this deck and the games and all that good stuff. For now, though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.